Traveling with 4G connections. Can we keep it simple? Are we trying to be real? Yeah, I think so. So today, Chloe, you're with us, and I guess you have a lot of traveling questions for 4G internet. So thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Yeah, if you could just tell me what you do. Yeah, so my name's Chloe. I'm from the Traveling Tubi project. Um, we have sold our house, and we are currently traveling around Australia in a caravan, as you can see a little bit of the caravan behind me. Um, so a lot of our caravan is set up for off-grid caravanning. So we do go to a lot of coastal places and a lot of remote places. Um, and we have found that we are just dropping into next to no, no internet, no signal. Um, we're hitting sometimes four bars of 3G and then sometimes one bar of 4G and that won't let you upload or download anything. Um, so yeah, so our caravan is set up otherwise. So we've got full battery system, full solar system. And the only thing that's holding us back now is the internet system. So yeah, we've got nothing. We've just got our phones um, at the moment. So we, yeah, we're looking at basically where we can go from next. So, so, so when you say phones, you mean that you hotspot on your phone when you use internet or what? How yeah, do do so that? at the moment, I am literally hotspotting on my phone through my laptop to watch and to be able to connect with you today. So um, I've got two bars of 5G and um, even then, yeah, at the moment, yeah. So we're in the middle of Perth at the moment. So we're lucky we're in a good spot. Um, otherwise, this wouldn't be possible. So I wouldn't be able to do any um, any video downloads or anything like that. No Netflix. I can't get any Netflix. Um, any, basically most things on Facebook and um, Instagram won't download for me if I am in a 4G with one bar. So um, yeah, most places that have the one bar of 4G, I can't get anything, can't download anything. Um, I'm lucky to send messages. Um, yeah, most things it, it take a long time and do drop in and out quite often, so. So I, I guess it goes without saying that you need internet and it's just not there. Pretty much, yes. Did they, 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 Two technologies to, that we could talk about um, and you, you sent me some questions maybe we go through that and then I can explain what you could do for one or the other because there's there's obviously a way that you can improve the signal into your phone which is useful but it may not be the best for data and then there's another way we just have a completely different solution that you can get such as hypothetically speaking a modem we didn't get any internet when we first um, basically started to leave. We thought we'll work it out on the road, we'll find something and someone will give us all this advice that we seem to be missing. Um, and yeah, we just felt like every time we did research, we couldn't find these questions and we couldn't find the answers for them. So probably my first question was basically, can I go from, from no usable internet? Is it possible to actually then go to having some internet? So the kit in general, the solution would consist of two things. You basically need an antenna of some sort that can get a connection, the, the, um, a, a more sensitive device that will pick up what's out there. And then you need to bring that into a receiver. Now the receiver can be a booster, it can be a modem, and that's pretty much it. And then after that, what that device does, that is something that we need to clarify with that customer. And this is, this is probably where it gets kind of confusing. So I still have these little props on my table. <laughs> this is the, um, I did a video on this earlier. This is a pointing, um, pointing MIMO 3 antenna. This is kind of an example of a type of antenna that you can put on the roof, actually, just behind me. That, that's, that's, that's the one I use on my videos. It's typically an antenna like this that you can put on the roof. Then it has a cable and the cable connects to a device inside your um, inside your caravans, which could be, everybody knows the cell phone. That's, that's one name that, that gets floated around a lot. Or you can connect it to a modem, or sometimes people call it a router. Um, and that's basically it. And that's really, there's an antenna, and there's a receiver. That That's the two, and yes, it will make a huge difference if it's a great, correct antenna. So if there is something, like you say, that like you have just marginal signal, Getting this kind of setup, that antenna, would make a huge difference to get you from marginal to useful. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I find there is a lot of, um, like something like Telstra, it lets you data share. So we were looking at getting a modem um, and um, doing like, I think it's called the Nighthawk one, because then that way we can data share. So that way we're using all of our data. So that's something we can connect to that antenna. That, that, that's correct. So the night talk, I don't have one on me. It's basically, it has two little antenna ports on the um, bottom side. So two rubber claps that you can um, just lift off. And then there's two TS9 pigtails or connectors that you put in there. What what many suppliers do, and we do it as well, then you have just a little, we call it a pigtail. So it's just an adapter cable. So from that little TS9 connector to the connector, that, that's the same one that connects to this. So 
those kits typically would be one of these antennas plus a little pigtail and it goes into a night walk. So it's a very simple way and it gets done a lot and it, it does work well. When we talk about the whole antenna and boosting our, well, I don't know if boosting is the right term, boosting our signal, um, are we boosting just internet or are we boosting our mobile data as well with that antenna? Yes, no, that is an awesome question and it's a hard one to answer. <laughs> First of all, boosting is a correct word in general, but you need to be, um, you need to be mindful where you apply that. So the cell fire is a booster. It basically takes something coming in and it amplifies it, makes it stronger or boosts it. Um, a modem doesn't necessarily have that boosting artifact. So it basically takes what comes from the antenna in and then it just does its, um, you know, the um, calculations and stuff to get, come out with an internet connection for you. The antenna as such will be able to be used on one device or the other. So we have two devices on the table in front of me. The cell fiber improves or boosts whatever Telstra gives you. That could be voice or mobile, or it could be data. That, so that's that. So the antenna does what it does, comes into this thing, thing being the cell fire. On the modem side, the same antenna brings it into a modem, but then the modem only gives you data. So that is the downside or the upside, depends on that. If you want your phone to have a stronger signal, you need to have a cell fire booster. If you don't care as much about the cell phone voice part of it, but you say, well, it's really data. Yeah, to give you the actual mobile yeah. signal. Yeah, phones these days are so reliant on just the Wi-Fi connection anyway, that you can almost use your phone in practically the way that you want to use it, but using a data connection through a modem, such as the um, Teltonic or 360, or, or the Nighthawk, that, that's it. So the antenna is the same. The device that does the, 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 um, the receiving site can be slightly different. Now there is a uh, there is an artifact of a cell fire that is a, kind of a bit of a negative, and it's always um, not dangerous. But I have to be careful how I explain this because a cell fire is good. It has been proven a lot of times by many people, but it has its um, its quirk, so to speak. The thing is, it doesn't necessarily give you the best data performance that you want. Um, it does make it stronger. But the way I explain it often to people is, it's like listening to a symphony orchestra through a megaphone. You can hear them, they are louder, but you you lose the quality. So I think that, that's the way to explain it. Yes, it will work, so you will have a better connection, but it's it doesn't have that quality anymore. Now, the voice is the same, the data gets, gets penalized. Yeah, so most of my stuff is all online. So um, I need to upload onto my website, I need to be able to respond to customers, um, I need to be able to upload photos as well. So I do photo shoots around Australia and I do need a strong connection, but I don't need mobile data because when I'm calling people, I'm just FaceTiming or I'm iMessaging or I'm calling through uh, Messenger or Facebook or something like that. So I could get away without having the data, the mobile um, signal, sorry, and just use just data. So um, what would be sort of, I guess, the best option in that sense if I'm going for something that's just just for data not so obviously not for mobile I, I just need good data and I need something that holds a good signal for a good amount of time so I can upload things and download things that that that's kind of really the direction that we see things are taking for us at least most of the time as well and that's I mean the, the night talk is a classic example that vast majority of questions we get would be people get the night talk because that's the kind of use that they have but then the night talk is not strong enough to pick up the internet in the remote places and then an antenna such as this antenna would be what is needed to get the night talk to that level that you can still use that full service of netflix and um, facetimes everything um, so it's basically a modem night talk is such a popular one at the moment so you have to mention that um, but otherwise if the people don't have a night talk and you just get a data only sim card um, you can get third party modems from um, no, many, many places. Orofshop obviously <laughs> has one as well. Okay, so you can just grab any sort of modem, any sort of transportable modem and just hook it up to the antenna. Is that correct? That, that, is, that is correct. Um, I, I think what you need to be um, just mindful of is making sure that it is compliant with Australian, um, like that's been approved on the network. Um, Nighthawk is such an easy example. Teltonic, you, you, there's, there's a few brands that you would look at and you would know, well, this one is a reputable brand. Um, don't go on eBay uh, unless you know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> yes. There is one thing though, that's actually, I'm just gonna slip this in because there's always, there's things happening here. Um, if it's Optus, 
um, and I, I did the video on this, so I still need to upload, but Optus, actually, you need a data SIM from Optus to make it work. If you get a voice SIM, and they actually have two different types of um, um, SIM cards. If you get the voice SIM, mobile SIM, it's not going to work. So on Optus, uh, okay. you need to be careful which one you take. Yep. Um, on Telstar, on, on Vodafone, as far as I know, I have never had any issues. So for those two, I, I thought, just get, get, get the SIM card on, on Optus. Just be mindful you need the data SIM. Yeah, yeah. So if I already had, I guess, a plan that's a data plan, I can just come in and say to you, I, this is my, I've got a SIM. I just need the rest of the setup. Is that correct? And you can basically give, give the modem and the antenna, and that's all you'll need for a good connection. And then what you mentioned earlier about the shared family plans that's starting to really become more popular, it almost makes it so much more um, appealing these days because, I mean, Optus has the same and, and Telstra has the same, that you, you just get that shared plan, plan. So it's not that that much of a hassle anymore to get another SIM card that you have to put into a, a modem. It's, it becomes quite a nice package deal these days. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm literally in the middle of Perth and I'm still having issues. My internet now has just dropped the camera because it's too slow. <laughs> I'm just literally hotspotting from my phone onto the laptop. Um, and yeah, my business has taken a big dive from, I didn't expect to be this slow and I didn't expect it to be this um, delayed and all the things that I need. So you, I, I guess you don't realize how connected you are until you start being disconnected. And we thought at first it would be okay because you know, business wise, I have somebody else helping um, that's in Adelaide. Um, she does a lot of bits and pieces, but then yeah, I didn't realize how much my customers want responses and they want them today. They don't want it in a few days time. They want a response and they want it today. Um, and yeah, a lot of stuff that, you know, just a simple email back is good customer response. And those sort of things have, have really taken a toll on my business. So it's quite surprising how much you use your internet and yeah, just simple things. Like you, I could send a quick text message, but I had to stand in the right spot or stand up on the caravan um, and that's sometimes, you know, like Sejuna and all that on the way out through there, the signal was next to nothing. So you would get something, you get a wave and then that was it. You wouldn't get anything else. So, um, yeah, even in, even in some big towns, we found it really hard to get a good, decent connection for what we needed. So, um, yeah, it's been quite surprising how, how much you rely on the internet until you don't have it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can imagine. Um, there is one thing that I, um, when we spoke about the antenna side of it, um, there is another, geez, I keep referring to videos that we're working on it that's not on there yet. <laughs> there would be another way to make a better internet connection, um, which which I'll, I'll have to link that video in when once it's up there and we have this one online as well. But this is, of course, an omnidirectional antenna. So basically, you put it on the roof and no matter how you are aligned, it, it always has a connection coming into the thing and it has quite a um, good track record locally here in Australia and also overseas. But if you ever wanted, not you, but anybody wanted a better quality antenna, I would welcome you to, to look at the other video. Basically, you would put a directional antenna outside, but it requires a bit of setup. But that was my other question is because sometimes you see some people with a setup and there might be a whole heap of trees on one side. And I always thought was, what if, you know, the antenna is facing that way, at least with our TV antenna, we can spin it to directionals and we can see an app where the best, where the closest um, tower is and we can then face the satellite that way. Is there something like that we can get that would give us a better signal if we can then face it directional towards the, the closest tower? Is that something that's possible? Well, there we go. That, <laughs> that is the question. So the, the first thing is there is a directional antenna way to do this. Um, there, there are further tricks that everybody's still working on, so I'll leave that for another day. But initially, this is an omnidirectional antenna um, that, that would, if you're behind a tree, that's going to be a problem. Now, if you can take a directional antenna, and the, there's some example, the one that I use is the x 2 antenna, which is, it's quite a lightweight antenna, 900 grams. Um, and we see people, and I did it in my, my demonstration as well, go to Bunnings, buy one of those telescopic aluminium masks or poles, and just um, lift it up so that at least if the antenna is higher than your obstruction. Because in your case, what you, what you mentioned just now, you know there's a tree, and you know that's the problem. So if you can get over it by having an antenna that faces that direction, that would be a big plus. Um, the way it would also work better is um, if the signal is just weaker. So so you say, well, let's say Seduna. It's not kind of still okay, but then once you go out, it's not actually 
very useful and more at all. And even this antenna may not be good enough. Then you would go to directional antenna. Um, it takes setting up, but it's actually not that hard. Um, and it will be, the directional antenna will always be superior to the Omni antenna. That's just physics of how the antennas would work. So that's, that's the trick. Yeah, that's really good to know, yeah. There are a few ways to know where do you need to point. One is actually just you need to learn your modem, and then there's 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 a certain uh, measure that you can use. So you just have to turn it around and then say, now it's working, and then it's working good, and then once it's, once it goes worse, you know, well, I'm I'm far, I'm too far, and you come back again. Um, you can also do studies on 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 the database and stuff, but that's the easy way is to just look for it find it and then say what well, that's that's what we're going to use for now brilliant that's so good to know it's that's so simple though it just feels like it's such a simple thing how is it that we haven't known about this you know every research we saw it was just go the cell fire cell fire and um then all research was telling us as well that it will only boost you know so much and it will only let you have so much and yeah it just seems like when we found you we're like this is so simple like it can't be this simple just you just put an antenna up you plug it into your modem and you're done like it's such a simple thing isn't it it is, and that, that's that's the beauty of what, what's been done here. Now, now, one thing that's, if you go into a bit of the um, analysis of the system, and, and I'm not an expert on that, but I do know this, that there is like the, the whole thing of MIMO versus SISO. So now that's, that's a bit technical, I'm sorry about that. But with a cell fire, it's a single antenna that comes into the device itself. So there's one coming in. With MIMO, meaning there's two antenna elements, um, that already helps. It just gives you a little bit of, or gives the receiver a little bit of extra um, uh, depth of the signal. So it, the sensitivity can be better with the modems and stuff because there's actually two antennas coming in and there's more information that can be deciphered. Specifically when it gets really weak, um, when, when you're really struggling or the modem is struggling to get the information out, getting two, two receivers and, and twice the um, information from different angles, it helps a bit. Again, it's a bit like, um, thinking you have two eyes with two eyes you can just see a bit more you have more depth perspective with one eye you kind of did it's still there but it's not as easy to see so that that's kind of another analysis analogy. yeah that's that's a good way to put it that makes a lot of sense <laughs> any other questions if you've obviously had a lot of remote places and all that sort of stuff do you know where you've gone where it's been um I guess there's the big gaps in between towns, but have you gone from something that shows next to no signal to then actually something? So I did see your video on um, Rapid Bay, and I know that there was very minimal signal there. Um, but have you tested in other places at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we, we do a lot. Of Rapid Bay is just a nice one here for us in South Australia because people always complain online. If you look at forums, and say, they always say Rapid Bay sucks. <laughs> so yeah. I just thought, you know, I'll go there, and then at least the locals would know. It's yeah can be fixed it is it is a relatable fix but the the, the problem with rapid bay is that somebody who lives in wa or in, in um, far north queensland he probably doesn't even know that that rapid bay exists never mind how good it is there um yeah well a lot of places we're going are very similar to rapid bay so it does remind us of those places is you know a lot of places we go where you know you don't get much because you're in a valley you're in a in a gully um so you have to walk up the hill so a lot of places where you'll walk up the hill to be able to gain your signal so um it's just purely that gully that can really um hinder the internet coming through the, the the issue with gullies is that unfortunately the reality will be that that they will be bad um sometimes when it just goes too weak there's not much more that you could do but that's where directional antenna will be a better bet and also the fact that you can go higher on a pole will also help a lot so you get get that bit of um, clearance from whatever obstructions there are um and and well we i test rapid bay a lot um down here in, in Adelaide where i live hallett cove is another place that's pretty bad but again it's the same artifact that it's basically behind the hill close to the um, close to the sea um but but the feedback we're getting from users around australia is is that's pretty awesome that with these things and what they're doing and then if you look online as well that people in europe and the us these 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 antennas work well yeah well my next question was going to be basically i guess what's your best setup what's the setup for someone that relies on internet so heavily um but i feel like you've kind of already answered that for me with the two directional antenna or the you know where you can actually change the direction to so it suits like what we do with our tv we spin it until we get a good signal and we find that 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 sweet spot basically so um was that the sort of one you reckon you would be the best bet if you heavily rely on internet and you want to get what you can at the best i would i would say so um there is there is 
there comes a point where um, some other products as well that some customers want the best of the best, but they don't necessarily understand why they want that much um, high performance. So it's often practicality as well. Like if somebody is um, may, maybe really not interested in setting up every time, then it would be okay to go for a good antenna that's that's good enough like this one because that would work well and it's just there he goes camping if he has the signal he's happy if there's no signal that's a good excuse to say i'm offline for a few days all good but there are then a case like yourself where it's a business connection um it would be better to go for a directional antenna just it, it, to me on my video it, it took eight minutes and i actually had to put on the um jockey wheel clamp as well in that time frame um so it's it's no time at all um, to, to get that going. So. Yeah, I mean, we've got a pretty big setup because we want to be comfortable on the road. So something setting up for a few extra minutes is no biggie for us because usually we'll stay there for quite a few days. It's not constantly moving. Um, we do stay in places for, you know, three, four days, sometimes up to a week until we run out of water and then we need to move. So setting something like that up sounds brilliant for us. So Yeah, and that it's I think it's easy. And I, I, I try through the videos to, to, to show that it's quite doable and easy as well. Yeah. The, the other thing with the modem, they they actually even with the Teltonicos, but but the Nighthawk as well. Do remember always they are just a modem by themselves. So the antenna is when you need it, but if you don't need the antenna, you still have this awesome thing in your hand that you could use anywhere for internet. So it's it's quite handy that it's yeah. the whole package isn't it's not the whole package or nothing. You need the antenna when you need it, but but you have this modem that you take with you, and then you can put it at home or you know, take it with you when you just drive around, and then you have a strong signal as well. Yeah, yeah, that's good to know. So, say if I have everything, like I have the modem here and all that sort of stuff, I can buy just the antenna. That's all I'll need. I won't need any other sort of. Um, I won't need to hook it up to any 12 volt or anything like that. Is it all just purely just an antenna? There's no electrics needed or any. Because I'm not very good with that stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's what sort of my question as well is that setup side of things. How does that go? It's, it's the funniest thing. And I, I, I keep saying this, I'm going to say this again, that last year I did a video <laughs> where I, I basically I, I basically told people that exactly this. I said, I get the question a lot. Does your antenna need power? And I said, no, don't worry. It's just dead easy. It is literally, again, it's like, this thing goes into the modem and there's no need for any additional connections or cable or power supply to whatever your modem needs that's all you need to do um and that, that that's that's everybody's used to that yeah so my modem just plugs into my usb socket yeah the um the night the night plugs into usb the um the deltonicos have their own um like um 12 volt supply so again, that, that's just the power or whatever's available in your caravan. Um, and then people were actually, you know, what about it? Yeah, that's good to know. I don't have to cut cords or anything. Nah, there are different kits available. So even even on these power cords, there, there, there is a, a DC block available for the Teltonic. So you can hardwire it into your caravan and just have a plug available to put a modem in. And so well, that's it. I'm using it now or I'm taking it out. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It just, it's, it's incredible how much we, we just came in so blank and we it has literally had answers that are so simple like it's just you just need an internet you sorry you just need an antenna to get internet something so simple like that we thought we would have to hardwire stuff in and the scary bit is you have to drill a hole with some of them but when you've already done a few bits and pieces it's not that big a deal um but yeah it just seems so simple like it just it's amazing how when i asked all these questions i felt almost like Really? That's the answer? That's it? <laughs> it, it, it actually is. Um, genuinely, it is. The, the, talking about drilling holes, that's the one thing that um, I just want to think about. And I, I, I still need to get my head around that as well. Is when you have a directional antenna, the way you feed the cable into the caravan, that's obviously something that every caravan owner needs to think about where or how can I just make that connection through. Um, and again, this is type of stuff out of shop does um, every day is deal on those things and I don't think that there, there are a few options available but it's, it's really just call whoever does the installation and just make sure that there's something neat um, that, that and that can be permanent setup so it's just a, a connection through and pretty much just like a TV socket in the old days but it's just a different type of connect but once you have a permanent connection you just have that available on the outside and put, put the antenna up and just 
plug it in or unplug it and stow it away. I guess it could be very similar to how our TV is set up, that our TV has the antenna and it just comes through the roof and because we, we take the TV off each time we move. So the TV comes off, we unplug it, and then basically we, we put the TV back on and we plug it back in. So it's pretty much, I guess, the same thing as that. Um, we just have to run the lines, obviously, to the antenna and back, which, yeah. The analogy with TV is actually um, so important because it is exactly the same. That There's an antenna, there's a cable, and there's a receiver. And 4G is no different. It's, it's just another technology that runs through different antennas, but it's exactly the same simplicity. Yeah, yeah, it is literally that simple. It's just amazing to know that there was so much, you know, we didn't know until we started asking these questions. So, yeah, it's been really good to know that there is, you know, someone like you that we can come to and say, this is our, our problem. Um, and the solution is so so simple and so easy. It's not like we have to go drop the caravan off for a day somewhere to get something installed and all that. We can literally just do it at the campsite here. So yeah, it's really interesting to know that it's just so that simple, <laughs> like I keep saying. I'm glad that I didn't complicate it too much for you. <laughs> if I can understand it, it should be okay. Because I know that when I did jump on your website, it was quite confusing. There's all these different cable names and all that sort of stuff. So that's where I felt like we got a little bit overwhelmed. Um, and then we started looking at all these different packages and all that sort of stuff. So I guess if you're looking at a package, it's basically your modem and your antenna. And then if you're looking at just antennas, it's because we've already got the modem. Is that correct to me saying that? If you have a night talk, then it's just an antenna. If you don't have anything, just get one of the kits um, or call us um, because somebody here would definitely um, be quite happy to help. It's most likely me or Cadle, but um, we're happy to guide you through what whatever specifics would be for your setup. But but in your case, as I said, the directional antenna and the cable, and if you have a modem, nothing else. If you don't have a modem, I would actually go for the 360 from, from our stuff options. Do you find, have you seen whether there's a difference between using your modem and using the Nighthawk for reliability, or do you find that they're sort of both about the same? The way that I explain this often to customers is there's this kind of two approaches to the to problem that that's being sold the um the night talk for one has a battery which is nice very handy for a lot of people that you can unplug it and still have it powered and, and running while you carry just the device itself around um i think the, the key thing for me is it's there's a consumer type of product versus a, a industrial type of product the consumer product like the night talk um, supports the latest features like it's really fast um, and, and all those things. The industrial type products such as the um, RET 360, it doesn't support the fastest internet that is in theory available, but it supports internet that is fast enough for everyone. Um, the, um, the, it's quite stable. Like the intention is this thing can be turned on and left on. You don't have to potentially power cycle after a few days to say, oh no, this thing is not connecting anymore. Let's just turn it on and off again. That kind of experience, you can't have that on an industrial device because it might be in the middle of nowhere. Um, so that's kind of, it, it's built for ruggedness and robustness and reliability in, in, in you know, continued use. One big plus of this one though over actually just straight up to, over the night is the fact that all the antennas are external to me that is massive um, because that means your antennas are going to be better even on wi-fi site so now i'm going into sales speech mode here but <laughs> I, I i seriously the, it has four four antenna ports two of those are the ones we spoke about so they go to the antenna on top the other two are wi-fi antennas so what you have on a night talk is two little Wi-Fi antennas. Uh, I don't know how big or size, but they are, they need to be on that board somewhere and they're hidden. These two antennas that come as Wi-Fi antennas with the, the um, uh, Deltonicas, they are already proper full-scale antennas. So they will perform better compared to the smaller versions. And we know how this thing works. It's an Omni, so we know you put it upright like this, it's going to cover everybody it's going to cover me and it's going to cover the screen and everybody i don't know and i have no idea how the antennas in the night talk is orientated or where it's actually radiating so it's definitely not going to be as powerful in all that yeah they're all it's all just one little unit basically so there's no antennas or anything it's just all hidden in there like a phone that's correct so that that's the downside to me and it's a big one um and then the other thing is because i have a connector here and i have an antenna I could replace this with something that might suit me better um, for whatever reason. I don't have one now to, to talk about, but sometimes people would have a big house or long house 
they um, they say, well, this is on this corner of my house, but I actually want the signal from here up to right to the other side. Just put a directional antenna on there and have it you know, face that direction, which is something you could do on like routers like that, where with a night talk you can't. So there are quite a few reasons actually why I love these. So. <laughs> Honest truth. That's really interesting because when we used to live at um, our other house, at, well, when we lived in a house, I should say, um, we had a Wi-Fi booster that basically, or extender, sorry, Wi-Fi extender to be able to go to our front gate. So when people push the doorbell at the front gate and it was the most unreliable thing ever, it would always cut out. It would never work when people were there. Um, and I could have just gotten something like that. Like, and then I could have just taken it with me. <laughs> so yeah, it's really interesting that it's something like that as well is so user friendly. Um, so if I was sitting outside the caravan, I could still pick up some of the Wi-Fi from inside the caravan. Obviously, whether we've got a decent enough, you know, you know, if we're in a decent spot, because I know sometimes where you're in a very, very low signal, it might just not want to. But, you know, if I've got, you know, a few bars of 4G, I should be able to sit outside. Is that, do you reckon that would be possible? That's, that's the, that is the intention, yes. Um, and that's probably where this thing is, is superior, because if, if you hide it in a, in a cupboard, um, the antenna would still be better and more likely to go through that, like that window that you have there. So it would actually be better at sending this the Wi-Fi out. Where smaller, smaller, weaker little antennas may have trouble, and you might just sit there on your your doorstep and still have a signal, um, but maybe not further, much further. Yeah, and when you're in um, 35 degree weather, you don't want to be sitting in the caravan. That's the one thing that really frustrates me is I have to do my work at the end of the day to be able to get, you know, if I'm sitting in the caravan, it's so hot in here. You don't want to be sitting in here and then yeah i'm just sort of thinking i think that would be really reliable that i could sit outside still get it and not be sweltering in here especially if you're not in a caravan park you can't put your air conditioner on because you, you can't run your power for that long so at least that way i don't have to sit in the hot caravan to get some work done <laughs> oh there we go that's another tick for the um <laughs> the deltonic yeah i feel like i yeah i feel like i understand it a lot more now so yeah good well thank you yeah knowing the difference between obviously boosting your internet or, you know, increasing your internet to increasing your mobile data. Um, I feel like we don't need to increase our mobile data, um, our mobile signal, sorry, not mobile data, our mobile signal, because everything we do is on the internet. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I do find even just hotspotting from my phone to my laptop, it glitches like it did before. I'm, I was, you know, I'm in 5G, I've got good signal, but it still glitches. It still has these times where it just can't keep up. So I feel like if I went that modem with the extra antennas already on the outside, it would be more reliable, especially when I'm trying to do, you know, business videos or something like that. I need it to be reliable. So um, I guess that's probably going to be our best bet is to go something like that. That's going to keep a good, strong connection um, and not have to keep, you know, unplugging it, resetting it. The amount of times I have to reset my laptop or reset my phone just to get personal hotspot to work. Um, yeah, I feel like something like that would be a lot more reliable. Yeah, no, that, that does sound frustrating, to be honest. The way you explain it, that's you, you, it's not sustainable to work like that. Oh, it is so frustrating. <laughs> pretty confident that this is the kind of thing that you need so um... I think that's everything I feel like you've answered everything um, it would just be now up to us to do the install um, which you know we'll obviously share that video and all that so people can see that too um, and then we'll just be testing it so seeing where we go and um, what signal we've got on our phone to then what we're getting when we're connected so yeah I'm really keen to give it a go and I feel like you know our business side of things is really gonna be able to withstand you know, us going off grid a little bit longer now. So that's really good to know. So thank you so much for answering my questions. No worries. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Um, so um, other than that, if, if anybody has any other questions as well, um, let us know or visit us on rfshop.com.au and send us an email and um, we'll see if we could help um, you as well. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.